Well, hey folks, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. Uh, in this discussion, we're going to be talking about what it means to be off-grid. Now, uh, I have been off-grid for over 20 years now, so maybe that qualifies me uh, to discuss this issue and give you my opinion of what it means to be off-grid. I'm sure some people may disagree out there uh, because that seems to be a really common uh, disagreement uh, even among off-gridders, you see it a lot uh, as coming out in disagreements in YouTube videos of, of what people believe off-grid living means to them. So let me give you what my opinion is of what it means to be off-grid. And it's really simple. Being off-grid only means that you're disconnected from the utility grid. That's all it means. doesn't mean anything else. So what is the utility grid? Utility grid is your electricity that comes from the power grid. It is the uh, sewer and water pipes that go into most people's houses, natural gas in most places. If you get a utility bill, then that those are your utilities, okay? So being off-grid simply means being disconnected uh, from those utilities. That is all it means. It doesn't mean anything else. Anything else is a lifestyle choice. Or in some cases, for some people, it means not having a choice, okay? So I want to explain the difference there. People that go off-grid uh, intentionally by choice, uh, we generally call ourselves off-gridders. But there's a whole lot of people, in fact, about 759 million people out there that are not connected to the grid, not by choice. In some cases, they're homeless or in some cases they live in areas where there simply is no grid. A lot of times these are in war-torn areas or very poverty-stricken areas where there simply is no grid. They don't have a choice of being on the grid. If they could get connected to the grid, they probably would. But people like me that choose to go off-grid and disconnect from the grid utilities, uh, we call ourselves off-gridders generally. Now, like I said, anything else outside of that is a lifestyle choice. Uh, and it, this is funny because a lot of people, if you watch the videos on YouTube, you're going to see this a lot. They think in order to be an off-gridder, you have to have a beard and wear a plaid shirt. Uh, no, that's a lifestyle choice, okay? Uh, also, your religion and your politics and all that stuff, those are lifestyle choices. They don't have anything to do with being off-grid, okay? And everybody's welcome to make those choices for themselves. If you want to homeschool your kids or you you don't want to have anything to do with the government or, or you know, you're into guns and hunting and fishing and all that sort of stuff, those are lifestyle choices. They don't have anything to do with being off-grid, okay? Uh, but, but a lot of people that make YouTube channels would like to make you think that that means you're an off-gridder. That's, those are lifestyle choices, and you're welcome to them, okay? I make my lifestyle choices, too. So it doesn't matter whether you're living in a tent, living in a van, living in a cabin like I built. Maybe you have a really nice home. Maybe you have a mansion. If you're not connected to the grid utilities, you're still technically off-grid. And uh, people can actually even go off-grid in the city. It's one of the things that I've really emphasized on my channel is teaching people how to set up small off-grid systems uh, using solar power and uh, using some equipment that we use here as, as full-time off-gridders that you could use in your grid homes in the event that you have a power blackout and a utility uh, failure so that you have those systems that you, so that you could live off-grid. Uh, and and survive through a uh, some type of uh, shit hits the fan situation or blackout or power emergency or society collapse whatever it is that you think you might need to prepare for. So I've always emphasized that, and a lot of my followers on my channel live in grid homes. But I've helped them to set up small systems. If something happens in an emergency, they could switch to their off grid systems and survive and thrive through those bad times. Now. There are also people who use a combination of systems, and sometimes they may have grid-tied systems. That's fine, too. These are people who may have a grid home that's connected to the grid, but they have solar panels and they have the other systems so that in an emergency they could have power. If you have batteries and capacity so you have 
uh, can store energy so that if uh, the power grid goes out and you can switch to an off-grid system, that's wonderful too. There's nothing wrong with that at all. As, as long as you understand that the systems have to have the capacity to carry you through at least for a week or so of a blackout or emergency, uh, then you're still able to live off-grid during that emergency and the rest of the time you're connected to the grid and you're also still reducing your power needs for everything else. Now some people go to real far extremes. They say if you have internet and you have a phone and you're not chopping your own wood, well you're not off-grid. Bullshit. Alright, that has nothing to do with being off-grid. If you want to go to that extreme and be isolated from society, that again is a lifestyle choice. If you choose to be isolated from society and you don't want to have any connections to family and friends, you don't want to be able to call a fire department, you don't want to be able to call an ambulance if you have an accident at your place, that's a lifestyle choice. I think it's a silly choice, I think it's a dangerous choice, and it isn't one that I recommend, but hey, if that's your choice to live completely isolated, then you're probably not even going to watch my videos or have YouTube or internet or anything like that, but those again are lifestyle choices, alright? doesn't have anything to, anything to do with being off-grid. So that is my opinion of what it means to be off-grid, alright? It just means not being connected to the utility grid. Other than that, everything else is just a lifestyle choice. It's something that you want to make in your lifestyle change. For my lifestyle here, I decided to, to build my own cabin. I set up my own small solar power system. My solar power system is under one kilowatt. It's a very small system. Runs everything. I have internet. I have phone. I have a microwave. I have a washer. I have most of the same appliances that people have in their grid homes, although my appliances are designed to be very efficient to work off a small system. I am off grid. I do not, I am not connected to any grid utilities. I do not pay any grid bills and I haven't for over 20 years. And my lifestyle choice, my reason for doing that was I wanted to own my own home. I didn't want to have to be paying utility bills so that I, my money went a lot farther so that the money that I was making, and yes, I worked for a long time, uh, the money that I was making uh, would go towards the things that I really enjoy doing, my adventuring, helping my kids out, maybe having some nice vacations, things like that. That was my lifestyle choice though, not something that everybody else has to do or expected. Some people want to live way off in the mountains, not be con connected to society, maybe be more isolated. Some people want to farm, they want to raise animals. I raised chickens here at my place for a long time. People want to raise animals, maybe they want to homeschool their kids, maybe they have a more religious perspective and want to want to practice their religious beliefs. Those again are just lifestyle choices uh, and off-gridding simply allows us the freedom uh, to be able to live that way uh, and make our money go farther if we need to make money. In a lot of cases, off gridders decide to start their own business. I did. I ran a pest control company for many years. And then I started writing books and uh, making videos for YouTube, uh, video reviews of products for Amazon, and that worked into worked into a side stream income. Now, part of my lifestyle has been also reducing my need uh, for having money. Uh, and so that my money would go a lot farther. So I developed some side streams of income uh, so that I could pay the small amount of bills that I do have at my place. I still need groceries. I still need propane for my on-demand water heater and heating and for cooking food. I still need a car, so I still need gas, license and registration and insurance for that car. I have property taxes here at my place. So I still do have bills that I have to pay. They're not grid bills, but I still have bills I have to pay. So I developed some side stream income uh, to pay off those bills so they're not a big pressure on me so that I can live the lifestyle that I enjoy living. So now here's my shameless plug. If you want to learn more about off-gridding and the systems that we use, I wrote a really good book on it many years ago that's still, that's become very popular. It's this book here. It's called Off the Grid. It's 355 pages. In this is all of your different systems, all of the different systems that off-gridders use, uh, from solar electric power to wind power to hydropower, how to drill your own water well or collect rainwater or use one of the other water harvesting systems. That's all inside this book here. Uh, and also a whole lot of other projects for reducing your need for using grid utility power and also some information on gardening, uh, building your cabins, uh, starting a business, all that sort of stuff. That's all in my book, Off the Grid. 355 pages. You can get this as low as $5 for the ebook, or you can get a printed copy if you want. Now, on top of that, I also have designed many off-grid cabins. Now, when I say off-grid cabins, 
These are cabins that are designed specifically not to be connected to the utility grid. Okay, so that means that they are small, uh, they are very efficient, they're well insulated, uh, they're affordable, they can be built on a trailer, they can build on a standard foundation, and I've got 15 plans of those in here in my book, and this book is called Solar Cabin Off-Grid Cabin Plans. 15 plans in there. Again, this is over 300, I think this is 375 pages. Uh, you can get the full color edition in the printed and hard copy book, soft cover version. And again, most of these I also have in ebook format. Uh, this is the uh, soft cover version of the same book. It's more affordable, but it is in black and white where this is a full color version. Or if you want, you can get the individual plans for any of my cabins. And I've got all of the, all the different cabins. And these are available in ebook, which is a full color format, or you can get the printed copies. Each plan is about 32 pages, and you get complete step by step uh, directions for how to build any of these cabins. I just want, again, I just want to emphasize that people talking about what it means to be off grid, uh, all it means is just being disconnected from the utility grid, and anything else is just a lifestyle choice. And uh, being off grid allows us to have more freedom in the choices that we make. All right, folks. Have a great day. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to talk. Don't lay your trip on me. Cause you don't walk my walk. I am my own man.